Hey guys, real quick before today's video, just wanted to let you guys know there's now creator code inside Clash Royale and all Supercell games. If you go to the shop, go to the bottom, you can enter in creator code to support CWA. It's as easy as that. Now, why should you support me? Really quickly, without giving you a huge speech, a huge song and dance, want to be respectful of your time, I funnel the majority of my money that you guys use to support me right back into the community, sponsoring leagues such as RPL, Clash Contenders, Indian Royale League, uh, sponsoring fun tournaments, cash tournaments every single day on Caffeine. Also, I do the uh, giveaways on Twitter, on Instagram, and of of course, I do the Subverse Pro for $1,000 and the Impossible Challenges ranging from $200 to $1,000. So all that goes right back into the community. So I really appreciate your support. Again, creator code CWA. I think you put it in. It's good for like seven days. Guys, on to the main video. Hey guys, what's going on? It is Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. Today, we have, well, it's hard to make a case that Lapicati is not the best player on paper at least he has the stats he has the credentials in the entire world i'm talking about crossover players pros who are amazing in crl on the competitive stage and then guys who have also dominated ladder there's only a few of these guys such as uh, morton and royal and of course Lapicati. but look at lapo's uh twitter information guys look at his bio Professional Clash Royale player for Immortals. Best finishes on ladder. Number one, number one, number two, number two, number two. Three second places, a couple third places, 11, 12, 12, 14, whatever, man. He's all over the place. And he boasted the highest win rate in CRL West and WCG. That's insane, man. Lapo is insane. But what happens when you put one of the dirtiest decks in Clash Royale in the hands of one of the best players? in Clash Royale. Well, we're about to see that today. He's currently third in the world with this deck, 3.5. And let's talk a little bit about the Executioner. The changes are on the way. Maybe by the time you're watching, the changes have already gone into the game. Uh, but I'll tell you what, Executioner's range is gonna be increased again. His damage is gonna be decreased. Personally, I think he's still gonna be completely viable, just not broken like he's been the last two months. So I think you can still have success with a triple spell, Royal Giant Miner, Executioner deck like this. Today I have a treat for you guys. He's so high on ladder right now that he's not going to play live. I will play live at the end of the video though. But he is ha has some amazing replays against some of the, the best in the world. Speaking of the ladder, one of the ladder goats in the game, let's start out with a match against the great Pompeo. Today's video is brought to you by Skylore, and boy do I have a huge opportunity for all of you guys watching right now. This game does not go live, does not go global until 2020, but you can have pre-closed beta access along with special perks when the game does go live, including a special custom premium skin to let people know you're a true OG inside this game using my link in the description below. Now, as you can tell from the gameplay in the background behind me here, it's kind of a strategy RPG type game with some MMO aspects. There is a fleshed out PVP system, a huge open world, uh, six different territories, 50 different locations, and of course, different factions and classes for optimal and full customization of your characters. So go ahead and don't miss out on this opportunity. Check out the game again using my link in the description below. Thank you, Skylore for sponsoring today's video. Playing his classic balloon deck here. Well, not the classic version, but a very, very similar version to the classic version. He actually has the goblin cage, as you can see in it. And you know, the nice thing about switching things up, just from time to time, I love live matches. I love the energy that they have. But the thing about having replays every so often here on the channel is that we get to see what cards are in his hand, in his decision-making process, just seeing what cards he has selected and when he uses them. I find there's a lot of value in that when watching these replays. That's why I try to kind of switch it up. Obviously, again, third in the world, he couldn't find a match. I asked him if he could search, couldn't find a match. So what are you gonna do? I still wanted to share this gameplay with you guys. Uh, so here we go, it's gonna be a minor going in. Now check this out, guys, right here. I mean, look at Pompeo's hand. He had to wait till the Executioner locked on, but then the NATO comes down from Lapo. that's gonna be tower down. Just like that. 
the NATO, the Miner, and the Executioner takes down that right tower from Pompeo before he's even able to do really anything to us inside the first minute of single elixir time. How about those, speaking of single elixir time, how about those ladder changes? Man, you guys had a lot to say about that in yesterday's video. We had over 1,500 comments at the time of this recording, and it's not even it's not even 10 hours after at the time of this recording that I released the video. A lot of people upset, a lot of people really excited about it. Uh, you know, at the very end of the day here, all I'll say about it is that I I think the change actually might be pretty good. Lapo's gonna get that King Tower activation here, and Pompeo's basically done at this point in the match, but we'll see if he can make a comeback. There are some pretty amazing comebacks coming at you guys later on in this video, but I like, I think the change could be a good one. You know, the triple elixir at the very end, although triple elixir does tend to kind of devolve into spam, spam, spam. The heavy beatdown decks have the advantage. Some people in the comments yesterday telling me, or saying, I should say, that uh, they think that this is a big advantage to like expo decks. I disagree. That one minute of triple elixir time at the end of matches that's going to be very difficult to overcome for Expo players personally, and we'll see how it all plays out. I think it's actually a, ba a really bad thing for, for cycle deck players, you know, who go that far into overtime. Keep in mind, only a very small percentage of, of matches even go that far into overtime. I think it's less than 5% overall inside the game. Anyway, here, 10 seconds left. Pompeo has the Goblin Flames showing and uh, zaps the tower out of frustration, Lapo, with the victory with this dirty, dirty deck. I mean, the Xe NATO triple spell Royal Giant. Ooh, it's a good one. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's something. It's something, huh, guys? All right, let's go to the next one here. And we have one against Viper too. And shockingly, Viper playing a Golem deck here. So this is going to be a very interesting matchup going against Golem. But again. Having that power combo of XE NATO, even after the balance changes, I think it's just going to be, it, it's difficult. And just defensively, look at Lapo's deck. He has that Royal Giant. And one thing I want you guys to pay attention to is when he decides to go in Royal Giant, I do think that, not to oversimplify the deck or any Royal Giant deck, but I think that's the biggest strategy key. The biggest thing you want to take away from a Royal Giant video, the Royal Giant deck, is when Lapo decides to go in aggressively with his Royal Giant, and when he decides just to defend, just to conserve his Elixir. Anyway, really quickly to wrap up the conversation about the the Elixir, the the, the overtime, I do think that it it's personally, I'm of the opinion that they should have waited till after CRL. I know that the pro community only makes up like less than one percent of one percent of one percent, a fraction, a small fraction of the player base, and most people who play this game probably don't even know about esports or don't watch the esports. That doesn't change the fact that CRL is really the premier mobile esport in the game. So they gotta treat it like that. They gotta respect that. They're industry leaders, Supercell, in Clash Royale. This is, this is a, Clash Royale was a first for so many things inside esports. So to me, they should have just even if they think the changes are gonna be positive, they should have waited because you want the, the veracity of, of the league to remain intact. You want people to, I don't know, you just want people to, it to, to continue to be the premier league. You have to make sure you're treating it incredibly seriously. And if you look at any sport, any esport, I don't think they would make any changes like this only a week or two before the big world finals, before the Super Bowl of Clash Royale. Anyway, going into this match, I apologize. Kind of rambled on a quite a lot of this video about it, but I want to respond to your comments because you guys had a lot of opinions on it as well yesterday. So we're going into double elixir time here, and here comes the NATO a little bit late, or actually after he saw the lightning there. From, so the well played comes down by Lapo. That was kind of a good defensive lightning there by, by Viper. And we go ahead and we respond with a knight. Now, a knight is something we haven't talked much about in this deck. Knight is one of those cards. I think that Tag was calling for a buff in the balance change video of the knight. I think that knight is kind of sneakily underrated. And you can see his power in this deck. Does he need a buff? Probably so. 
Not to say that, but I do think that he's been, look, again, able to cycle to that three elixir knight to block that baby dragon. Just stellar defense here from Lapo against Viper and able to defend, but damage is pretty even here. So for 13 seconds remaining, we go in with that Royal Giant Nato to pull everything back, but we also attack with the Miner. The Miner's going to pull that Lumberjack away. Meanwhile, the the uh, Nato, the beautiful Nato, pulls that Night Witch away, allowing that Royal Giant to get one crucial hit on that left tower, taking it down for Lapo, taking down Viper. Very well played there. Look at this guy. Ranked number one. Not for long here, man. And Lapo says, just a prank. I'm not sure exactly why he said that, but he did change his deck up very slightly for this matchup and this matchup only. He has Earthquake and Arrows in there instead of the uh, the Fireball and... He has Earthquake Zap. Okay, so he took out Log uh, Fireball and put in Earthquake Zap. Took out the NATO too in Arrows. So very interesting. He was still able to beat the number one player. I just want to show you this replay too because... Hey, Earthquake actually helped him out here, you know? Earthquake's one of those hit or miss cards. Either you dominate because they have a building in their deck, or, you know, you can still get value out of it against Swarm Troops, against Skeletons, uh, but, you know, it's just not as effective, obviously, if they don't have that building, that structure inside their deck. Any of you guys use Earthquake? Are, like, any of you guys huge Earthquake fans? Use it in, like, all your decks? I think it's a good spell. I actually think it's a, a good spell Hey, the last time we'll see those arrows shoot like that, they're now going to be three waves of arrows. But yeah, I think the Earthquake is pretty solid. Uh, anyway, here we go. Uh, an early graveyard coming down, but we have plenty of answers here. We have the Valkyrie, obviously. We have the Goblins on the other side. Poison is in the hand of the opponent here. But we go ahead and just allow that Ice Wiz to lock on to our right Princess Tower. And here comes the Royal Giant in the opposite lane. Bomb Tower's down. We have Earthquake selected. We go ahead and use it right away. It's going to evaporate that Bomb Tower. NATO comes down from the opponent, but our Royal Giant's still going to get a hit on that left tower. Meanwhile, we have that Miner on the right tower. Some opposite lane pressure, dual lane pressure here from Lapo and Relentless with a double Valkyrie in the left. You don't see that every day. That was a good heads up play. Just recognizing that Fasil had nothing in his deck for this. What a great uh, Valkyrie Goblin push by Lapo, right? What a great push. I mean, those are the little nuances, the little small plays that that differentiates a pro from your average mere mortal player, right? Just having the wherewithal to place a naked Valkyrie at the bridge, just realizing that the opponent didn't have an answer, didn't have knight, didn't have bomb tower in hand, and we just attack there. I think he might have had that NATO in hand. I'm not sure. Uh, you know, I can't rewind. Technology is still not there to rewind. Uh, I can't rewind, but even if he had his NATO in hand, we supplemented that push with the goblins after we delayed just long enough for the barbarian barrel to come down. You see all those things that went into account on one of those pushes, able to take down that left tower, and those are the difference makers, ladies and gentlemen. So here we go. It's going to be goblins in the back in case that graveyard comes down. It does come down, so does the poison. We have Valkyrie meeting those cards at the bridge. Meanwhile, Executioner just trying to hold on for dear life here against these skeleton zap also comes down we have a baby d at the bridge but baby d is preoccupied with that valkyrie so here we go it's going to be 611 hp remaining on that right tower meanwhile uh the royal giant is going to kind of tank for a little bit from that first baby dragon but a big counter push coming in with about 12 seconds left on the clock can he stop this well, Valkyrie's down, the Goblins are down, the Poison is down, five seconds, four, make it three seconds, can he stop it? Arrows come down, one second, and the tower goes down. Told you there's going to be a really couple good matches here, but we still have the damage advantage. So the opponent goes with a preemptive bomb tower, but that's an easy response from Lapo there. He goes immediately with the Earthquake. He has Zap in hand. He's going to Zap that bomb tower and the Princess Tower, kind of allowing him to at least pose the threat of potentially dropping that Royal Giant in the pocket. Instead, he waits for the opponent to cycle all their defensive cards. Then he attacks with the Miner. Another bomb tower down, but we're back to another Earthquake, and we drop it there. Earthquake does a ton of tower damage on top of the building damage. Again, Earthquake just one of those cards that it just, it, it's it's solid. It's solid. Anyway, Knight there in the pocket. Execution's gonna finish off that Knight along with the uh, King Tower, and things are pretty much over here. 50 seconds into Sudden Death Overtime. 
and uh, we'll see what happens here. Valkyrie making her way in the left. We have an earthquake cycle situation. Maybe spell, maybe arrows, excuse me. Maybe a minor to finish things off. I think that's going to be the case here. So tower down there from Lapo on the right. GGs against Fas or Faisal. Faisal. My apologies, guys. You know me. There's one thing you can count on. It's me butchering names since 2014. All right, so we're going to go against here. I want to show you one more. Tim, this guy. All right. I want to show it against Tim here. It's another uh, graveyard deck, but this time it's a graveyard beatdown with Giant. Then I'm going to jump into the arena after this match, and I'm going to play myself as well. So here we go. It's going to be Giant for the opponent. Starts out with the Giant, and look at our hand. Kind of awkward, right? I mean, <laughs> we're just going to delay and place that Knight in the back. No Royal Giant to punish there. I'm sure he would have, in that situation, probably would have went Royal Giant opposite lane had he had it in the in his hand. Uh, but he didn't, so we go with a defensive stance instead. Uh, nice job using the uh, Executioner there and the Knight to chop down that Giant despite the poison from the opponent. So the opponent's already had to use the poison, the Giant, the Bar Barrel, the Skeletons all on that one push. So that's why Lapo decides to go in with the Royal Giant there. He just knew that he had a really big Elixir advantage. And he has plenty of Elixir to defend here. He places those Goblins behind his Princess Tower, able to cycle to that Miner on defense and then the Knight on defense. To circumvent that Night Witch from even getting close to that tower. Just really nice defense there. And again, he played the Royal Giant recognizing that that very first push was a little bit of an overcommitment by Tim. And then after that, he just stopped. He didn't support that Royal Giant, which is a huge strategy key for you guys playing Royal Giant, especially in single elixir time. Don't be overly eager to support your Royal Giant to the bridge, right? You have to have Elixir left to defend, especially against a graveyard deck that thrives off of counter pushes. So here we go. It's going to be Tim reloading again with the Night Witch in the back. We respond with the Executioner in the left. Here we go. About 20 seconds remaining here in single Elixir time. Executioner uh, cycled in the back for the opponent as well. So essentially just throwing away that Night Witch. Now here's an opportunity, but we don't want to go same lane again. We want to be very, very cognizant of the fact that the opponent does have the uh, big graveyard counter push potential. Instead, we go in with that Miner, buying our Executioner some time on defense. And look at that Knight, guys. That Knight was placed to block the opposition Executioner there. Poison comes down. We had Goblins again safely hiding behind our Princess Tower, able to mitigate damage. While, meanwhile, we took that right tower down to 18, 18 plus to log, make it 16, 95. Royal Giant is down again. Executioner right in his face. We go with a Miner on the tower as well. So Miner's going to get a little bit of chip damage. Meanwhile, Royal Giant connects for a few hits on that left tower, even despite the Executioner. Here we go with a big giant push in the right. Giant Skeletons, Executioner, nice Knight again there. Knight just coming in handy. So many situations in this matchup, but it's not over yet. We have to use that NATO there. Actually, a really nice NATO killing that Executioner. He had a sliver of health left, and then we had that login cycle to defend pretty flawlessly there in the right. So only eight seconds left. At this point, we can almost just spell cycle here let's see what he decides to do he has royal giant in hand doesn't play it right away and thankfully he does have that commitment from the giant from the opponent he decides just to go ahead and go in he goes all in here that way the opponent cannot support their push in the left to that giant we're able to kill a giant just using goblins get that right tower to five fireball range and boom tower is down very well played see how he went really aggressive in the right at the very end there and that was kind of offense to, to a end the game and b it was off it was defense through offense right and that's something that you guys can take advantage of no matter what deck you're playing if you don't have an appropriate answer especially for a tank go ahead and go all in and then you can defend on a five for two trade with goblins and a giant in the in the left lane there so let's go ahead and try the deck for ourselves guys i think i'm ready Whew, let's do this So we have a update coming, uh, a feature update coming in December for Clashmas, which should be interesting. We already know we're getting the Battle Healer for Elixir Rare card that heals herself passively, also heals in kind of an AoE format around her. Caught that Miner there to start things out. And uh, we'll see what he does here. He goes with the Dark Gob, so I'm actually going to go ahead and hover this. See, look at that. 
I didn't go preemptively with the the log on the Dark Goblin, because I figured if he has Dark Goblin, he has a response that's going to require the log, probably, in the left lane, in the right lane with the Royal Giant. So that's why we didn't go aggressive against Slap there. Don't think he has NATO in this deck, but better safe than sorry. Just looks like a regular bait deck. Well, not a regular bait deck. He has Miner in there, too. So it's kind of an interesting Miner bait, but he probably has Rocket, so we'll play Executioner over here. And he fireballs. Okay. So fireball is okay. Still gonna have to respond to this. One rascal can do so much damage, so. Again, better safe than sorry here. He goes with the dark goblin again. This time I will log it. And this time I can't pull that miner. I might have been able to, but again, trying to be a little bit safer. He might log this. There we go. So I have Log out of hand for the opponent. Uh, so his Fireball, he might use it here, but we'll see. I'm going to focus on defense first, then I'll worry about Royal Giant in the opposite lane, depending on what he does here. Does Fireball. And again, making sure that I have my Log for the Goblin Gang. He has Bats, too. So... He's going to use Bats. Nice job on his part. Bats and Mortar. So why didn't I figure out he was using Mortar earlier? I'm going to let this go. Love that. As soon as I saw the Bats, I should have known what he was playing, right? Catch the Miner there. Nice, nice. Gonna get a little bit of damage there. This time we'll go in again. I need to start switching up my spots on these cards. I don't know if I should have wasted a log there. I can go in with a minor fireball. But what I'm gonna do is this. I think on this next sequence, I'm going to go Minor Fireball, so he's probably going to Fireball this Executioner. Ooh, he doesn't. I'm going to go Log, Minor, Fireball. Nice. That's exactly what we wanted there. He has the nice log there to try to get that Dark Goblin to the tower. It doesn't work for him, though, so we're looking pretty good here, guys. He's going to log, miner, and fireball. That should be it. Pull everything to the miner. Perfect. Good game. So there we go, guys. Uh, yeah, the, dock, the deck the dock. The deck is toxic. I can, uh, I can go ahead and confirm that to you guys. Good luck with it. I think this deck will be completely viable, even with the balance changes. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much to Lapo for joining me on the channel. Go ahead, check his player stats and profile. Thanks to StatsRail.com, and give this man a follow on Twitter. He's uh, he's posting. He's a pro player with Immortals. He's one of the best guys to follow out there on social media. Definitely follow and track his uh, comings and goings in the competitive scene of Clash Royale. So, guys, huge shout out to Bren Chong, my YouTube partner. Check out his information in the description below. Thank you, and as always, take care, guys.